close to 45% of the global population live in hotspots of high vulnerability to climate change. Global average temperatures have already increased by 1.1 degrees Celsius. Climate disasters have almost doubled in the last 20 years, destroying lives and livelihoods. Recent evidence points to global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius by the early 2030s. The world is heating up much sooner than predicted. Every small increase in temperature is magnifying climate risks. Extreme temperatures, floods, sea level rise, drought, wildfires. The top six hazards are all directly linked to the weather and climate and therefore we could no longer continue implementing disaster risk management interventions and climate change adaptation strategies independently. As part of our coherence agenda, any new projects targeting disaster risk reduction must be reviewed against climate risk management indicators because by managing climate risks, we are automatically reducing disaster risk. The magnitude and rate of climate change and associated risks depend on near-term mitigation, adaptation and risk-reducing actions. Risk-informed planning can avoid the creation of new risks and maladaptation. Disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation must go hand in hand. The Framework for Resilient Development in the Pacific and its complementary Pacific Resilience Partnership is a global first. It is a regional framework integrating climate change and disaster risk. It recognizes the need for integrated and inclusive approaches to climate change and disasters in ways that contribute to sustainable development. Of significance, it promotes national efforts for dealing with climate and disaster risk through adopting integrated policies and legislative reforms, including efforts to mainstream climate and disaster risk reduction approaches through their national development plans and sectoral policies. To reduce climate impacts, countries need a risk-informed and integrated approach to development, a comprehensive disaster and climate risk management approach. National adaptation plans need to integrate risk-centered approaches. Disaster risk reduction strategies should reflect climate projections and data. Addressing uh, the systemic nature of risks is not easy for any entity. In Colombia, this work is being done by the National Planning Department, the Ministry of Environment and the DRM National Agency. It constitutes uh, an additional institutional burden uh, with overlapping responsibilities. We find very useful to apply in Colombia the comprehensive risk assessment approach in order to stop working in silos. The stakes for our planet have never been higher. The pandemic recovery is a unique opportunity to integrate adaptation and risk reduction at the subnational, national, regional and international level. The world is at a crossroads. Climate and disaster risks are growing faster than our collective efforts to build resilience. We need to provide unified guidance about understanding, managing, reducing and addressing climate and disaster risks before they impact at-risk communities and inflict devastating consequences on lives and livelihoods. This is the only way we can protect the planet and poverty and ensure that all people enjoy safety and prosperity. A climate-resilient future is possible if we take joint action now.